In this video, we're going to start solving Newton's second law problems in one dimension. I've written Newton's second law here. The vector sum of all the forces on one object is equal to the mass of that one object times the acceleration of that one object. I've written in this way to help us. This is really all we have with solving Newton's second law problems. And so we need a strategy to be able to apply this physics to help us solve them. It points us in this direction, to first isolate one object of mass m, then find all the forces on that one object. Sum those vectors, and we'll use a free body diagram to help us. And then set that sum equal to the mass times the acceleration, which is also a vector. And then we'll learn how to extract scalar relationships from that vector equation to solve the problem. Okay, so here's a problem. I have a 50 kilogram crate and Alice is pulling on it with a tension of 200 newtons. Bob is pushing on it in the same direction with a contact force of 150 newtons, and there's a frictional force in the opposite direction of 50 newtons. This is a one-dimensional problem. We're setting up this sliding model where we only worry about forces in the horizontal direction for now to keep us in one dimension. We want to know the acceleration of the crate. So we're going to apply Newton's second law to this problem. The first, isolate the object. Well, I think we, want, we know the object we want. That's going to be the crate. Next, we need to find all the forces on the crate. Well, there are three forces. We're just worried in the horizontal dimension. And that's the tension force, which I've called T, the contact force from Bob, which I've identified F with a subscript B, and then the force of friction identified F subscript F, and I have the vector signs for each of them. You could use other variables. When I did this originally, I had F sub A for the force from Alice. You could have F sub capital C for a contact force. You want symbols that mean something to you so that when you see them, the meaning behind them is clear and not just random letters. We want to sum the vectors, and I'm gonna start with a free body diagram. A free body diagram starts with a dot representing the object I, I have here. And then the forces are all pointing in their appropriate direction with their tail on that dot. So I have the tension force and the contact force from Bob both going to the right, and then the frictional force going to the left. The other key part of the free body diagram is the coordinate system. I've identified the positive direction to the right because it's the coordinate system that's going to allow us to turn our vector expression into things we can use. In one dimension, it is the sign of the vector relative to this coordinate system that gives us the direction of the vector. So I want to sum these vectors, and so I've written them explicitly here. The tension has a magnitude of 200. It's in the positive x. The force due to Bob is 150 in the positive x. The force due to friction, 50 newtons in the negative x. And the sum of these vectors is equal to the mass times the acceleration, also a vector. And it has a magnitude equal to the mass times the magnitude of the acceleration. And it will have its own direction. I've emphasized the vector nature here. But we can now create an easy scalar relationship given our notation for vectors in one dimension. Tension is a positive 200 plus the contact force, which is a positive 150 added to the frictional force, which is a negative 50, is equal to the mass 50 times the acceleration. And solving that is easy enough. We get 300 is equal to, is the net force is equal to 50 times the acceleration, or A is equal to 6 meters per second squared. At this point, you might have said, well, okay, that was pretty simple. I could have done that a lot faster and skipped a lot of those steps. And that's true. I could have as well. <laughs> But I think at this point, it's important to look from the beginning all the way through without skipping steps, practicing it on simple problems so we get good at the procedure when the problems become difficult.